In this video, I'm looking at the process of addition, though of course addition and subtraction are closely related because subtraction is the inverse of addition. So for example, because 32 add 18 equals 50, then 50 take away 32 must be 18. They are inverse operations. At this stage, the children are still learning addition and subtraction facts to 20 fluently. They need to be able to answer quickly questions such as 8 add 9 equals what? Or 14 add what equals 19? To solve this sort of question, they may still use their fingers or concrete objects such as units, or they may well use a number line. So 8 add 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 8 add 9 is 17. Or they might use a number track such as a clearly marked ruler. But hopefully they are beginning to simply know the answers as they have practiced so much. They can use their knowledge of number facts such as 9 add 6 equals 15 to find related facts such as 19 add 6 equals 25, 49 add 6 equals 55 and so on. For some questions, they may find it helpful to use number lines, and they may be sketching their own. 57, so they're starting there at 57, they're adding 26, so add 10, add 20, gets them to 77, then adding 6 on to 77, they will get to 83. They will be starting to work on operations involving three-digit numbers. They will use their knowledge of number bonds to answer questions such as 247 plus 6, so a three-digit number plus units or ones, three digits plus tens, three digits plus hundreds. They will continue learning to set numbers out in columns. So let's look at the question 43 add 25 in columns, 43 add 25. And it can be demonstrated using this equipment. 43, 25. Adding the units, 3 add 5 gives us 8 units. 4 tens and 2 tens gives us 6 tens. So we reach the answer 68. This equipment is really good with questions such as 49 plus 24. In columns, 49 plus 24 would look like that. Now adding the units first, 9 units and 4 units, will give us 13 units altogether. Quite helpful to put them in a long line because we can see then that 10 of those units can simply be swapped for another 10. So those units can go away because we've replaced them with that 10. So 9 add 4 gives us 13. A 10 and three units. Now we add the tens, four tens and two tens, that's six. One more ten gives us seven tens. So the answer comes out as 73. And they can extend this work to numbers with up to three digits. 359 plus 263. 359, 263. So we start with the units, nine units, and three units, it gives us 12 units. But we know that 10 of those can be swapped for an extra 10. So nine units add three units gives us a 10 and two, it gives us 12. So now we've got five tens and six tens and another 10. So actually we've got 11, we've got 12 tens. But of course 10 of those can be swapped for an extra hundred. So we had five and six and one that gave us twelve tens. So that's two tens and the extra hundred. So now we've got three hundred, two hundred and one hundred. We've got six hundred. And the final answer can be shown with six hundred and twenty two. It's much easier for the children once they can manage without the equipment. They can simply use their knowledge of number bonds but follow the pattern that the equipment has shown them. So if we look at a question like 586, add 375, following the pattern that we saw with the equipment, six units and five units is 11 units, so one unit and one ten. 
that still says 11. 8 tens and 7 tens, that's 15. 16 tens, that gives us 6 tens and an extra 100. 500, 6, 7, 8, 100, 900. Final answer, 961. The children need to practice and practice. But confidence in knowing what to do when they don't know the answer is the key to mathematical success.